Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. going on behind you? Well this is an example of a, a great beneficial that we see not just in agricultural fields but in rural settings and even urban settings. This is Terosticus melanarius. It's actually an invasive alien species from Europe so it's, it's been naturalized to large parts of Canada. It's a ground beetle and the generic term for the family Carabidae where there's many many different kinds of predators. The adults this one is dining on a nice cabbage looper larva, but it'll go after cutworms and birth the armyworm. It'll go after grubs, all manner of animals as an adult. And as the immature, it's in the soil, in the root zone. So it'll feed on root maggots, it'll feed on wireworms, cutworms, etc. So this is a very good generalist predator. And this is what we mean by a beneficial. It's one aspect of being a beneficial. Say another aspect here, here's 19 of 23 species of bumblebee in Alberta. Uh, all different kinds of bumblebees compared to a honeybee or a parasitic wasp or, or a um, Vespid wasp, but these are you know beneficials that people are very, very familiar with, where you have a pollinator. But there's predators, great animals that are going out there. So they're suppressing what we would consider to be pest insects, things eating our crops, our structures, ourselves. And uh, vast majority of insects on the planet are beneficials, whether they be pollinators, predators, parasitoids, decomposers. That's another group of animals that we we don't give enough attention to, and that's a beneficial in your field. Do you have healthy soil? Do you have nutrient cycling? Yes, you have um, an increased reliance on non-invasive techniques in, in terms of weed management. So zero tillage, minimum tillage, you're not breaking ground as much. And what happens is, is you have a huge buildup of organic matter. Well, how do you break that stuff down? How do you get that nutrient cycling going? It isn't all microbes. You got a lot of insects who have to chew the larger bits into smaller bits that the bacteria and fungi can then assimilate and then release those nutrients to the roots for our crops, thereby reducing our reliance on artificial inputs, costly artificial inputs at that. So there's many different kinds. I mean, sometimes we think of something as a pest. Here, blister beetles, Meloidae. Adults come into a canola crop, you think, oh, they're eating the flowers, they're actually going after a lot of the pollen in, in, in the flowers. But this is actually indicative of, oh, I had grasshoppers. There'd have to be an awful lot of these beetles for you to have a big problem, where they'd actually take off so much flower material that it reduces yield. But instead, I would say, oh, I guess last year we had a lot of grasshoppers because the immatures, the larvae of, the, of these beetle, feed on grasshopper eggs. So here you would have thought, oh, I've got a pest. No, this is a beneficial that in really bad years, we're high grasshopper outbreak years, that yeah, these animals are going to come up to a population level that they could do some damage. But for the most part, that's an indication. You've got their, them on your side looking after your grasshopper populations. So pollinators, predators, parasitoids, decomposers, all contribute to a healthy ecosystem. If we look at our fields more as an ecosystem than as a factory, then we're seeing that the responsibility isn't exclusively on our shoulders for our fertility, for water, for pest management. Instead, we can rely, offload some of that responsibility onto natural ecosystem services, such as the beneficial insects, using thresholds to make a decision about whether or not to spray or when to spray a pesticide, that's in part how you conserve those beneficials. Not spraying when it's not necessary. Spraying only when that natural ecosystem has not been able to overcome the buildup in that pest population. So making more informed decisions, taking in as much information as possible, and, and having that, in, that, that decision have a higher probability of success. That's what it boils down to, is just taking in all the information that you need and is available to make your decisions. Well, so what are some other things we can do to, uh, to help the beneficial insect populations? Anything that, that you can think of in terms of agronomy. So if you have uh, selecting for a crop that is uh, that produces well in your eco zone, right? If you're in the south versus the center of the province or the north, you need uh, a cultivar or variety that performs under those conditions. So you've got a healthy plant. And that means you can have a higher tolerance to pest levels, and then you'll spray less often. Uh, you know, are you looking at fertility? Are you looking at uh, you know the water? that's necessary, uh, whether it's dry land farming or if you're under irrigation. Then, so everything that you do, you think of it as crop management, well that is pest management. Everything that you do for your plant influences the pests. 
And everything that the pests do influences your crop management. So in addition to that, think of it as a landscape. Do you have places where the insects, the beneficials, can overwinter? Roadside ditches, hedgerows, uh, small areas like, like shrubs, not full shelter belts, but shrub areas, uh, hedges, literally, and there's flowering plants because these beneficials, if I'm going to hunt down one of my prey items, I need some gas in my gas tank, so I need nectar sources. So I'm not saying let all your weeds go to flower, but do you have other flowering plants? Uh, we call them hedgerows for a reason. Is, is there some, some smaller shrubs that allow for protection and snow gathering for good overwintering success? We have flowering plants, herbs and forbs, so there's nectar sources for these beneficials. So when you think of it as a landscape scale, we're not saying that you should have a weedy field. No, because the competition from weeds vastly out ways the benefits given to those beneficial insects. So what we want is a more of a mosaic of a landscape, not millions of acres of just monoculture, but instead every quarter has a refuge, whether it's a shelter belt or there's a woodlot or there's a wetland or there's some form of natural refuge for these beneficial insects to overwinter and then recolonize your field. And this way you're assured of a functioning ecosystem every cropping year.